everyone, it's Marissa from bumblebeeapothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make vegetable medley. This is one of the really important ferments that Dr. Natasha talks about. In her books, Gut and Psychology Syndrome and Gut and Physiology Syndrome, she has the recipes in both of those books and directions how to make it and how to use it and everything. It's very important because it's a very specific ferment. There's a lot of different fermented foods that are very beneficial on the GAPS diet or for anybody who just wants healthier digestion. And it's really good to have a really wide variety of those. This one is very, very good to include because it has very specific microbes and Dr. Natasha designed it to be a specific way. It takes certain vegetables and kefir whey as its starter. So I'm going to show you how to put it together and then we'll talk a little bit about how to enjoy it and all that good stuff. So let's jump into the recipe. So I'm going to start off by roughly cutting up a whole cabbage. I always try to use organic produce when I'm fermenting. I find that it gives a lot better results. And of course, avoiding pesticides is always good. And then I'm going to slice a beet and add that. Next I'm going to add about a teaspoon of dill. This can be dill seeds, it can be dried dill, fresh dill. I have fresh dill here so I'm going to add about a teaspoon into each jar. Next I'm going to add, she says, a handful of garlic cloves. So I'm just going to peel a bunch and add them. So she says you can also add some Ew. coriander seed, caraway seed, black peppercorns, and mustard seed or juniper berries. I have mustard seed and some black peppercorns. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of each of those. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons total of our mineral salt, high quality mineral salt. Either Celtic sea salt or Baja gold are my favorites. So you can do this in a giant big one gallon jar. I don't have one available that's that big for this recipe. So I'm splitting it into two. So I'm just gonna do one tablespoon in each jar. The next thing to add for the whole recipe total is one cup of kefir whey. And this is kefir that comes from homemade raw milk kefir. And she is very specific about this. And that's one of the things that makes it such a unique and important ferment is the kefir whey. So I got this myself from my homemade raw milk kefir. And I'm just gonna add half of it to each jar. You want one cup total, but I'm just putting half a cup in each jar. The last thing that we're going to do is add filtered water. We're gonna fill the jar up to the shoulder with filtered water, which is the part where it just starts to curve. And then I am going to be pressing everything down, to try to keep it as submerged as possible, so. going to go ahead and close these with a lid. You're welcome to use a fermentation lid if you want to. I always stick to these kind of lids since this is what I learned from Monica Corrado, the GAPS chef. I like these because they're easy to find, they're cheap, and they have this handy little thing. You see how the 
top pops up and down. That's when you know, when it doesn't pop up and down anymore, you know it's ready to move to the refrigerator. So she says to leave the ferment for a few days to a week at room temperature for it to culture. And then when it's ready, the vegetables will be soft and tangy. You can eat the vegetables, you can drink the brine. And then she talks about how you can add more vegetables to this again. So she says when the brine and the vegetables start getting low, add fresh cabbage, beetroot, garlic, some salt to taste, and then top up with water and ferment at room temperature again. And then she talks about other kinds of vegetables that you can add later on too. You can add cauliflower, sliced carrot, Brussels sprout, broccoli, and then you can just keep this going forever, she says. You can just keep it going indefinitely, just always adding more vegetables and water and salt. And it becomes such a great remedy to have on hand, she says, to use against upset stomachs and sore throats, and then just all that friendly bacteria for your digestive tract too. So I'm going to let these ferment and then we will start enjoying these. I hope that you give this recipe a try. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make Dr. Natasha's vegetable medley. Be sure and check out that description box for links to where I like to buy a lot of groceries, links to free eBooks and other goodies, where to get Dr. Natasha's books. I have a GAPS 30 day meal plan. I also have a program where I coach clients through the GAPS diet. All that information is down in the description box. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would like it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.